Hey guys, welcome to CPM3. This is module one, lesson one. And if you notice right here in the sections, we are covering section 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, and 9, 3. So if you notice on your notes page, we have seven different pages. We've got a lot of notes, a lot of concepts to cover in this first lesson. Um, the beauty of this this video is that if you already feel like you've got things down on this first page, please fast forward it. If I'm going too fast or anything, you can pause it, you can rewind it. So this video is completely at your speed. But in this lesson, we are simplifying algebraic expressions and solving linear equations. So it says before we practice simplifying expressions, there's some vocabulary we must go over first. So this first blank is a term, a term is a number or a product of a, of a number and variables raised to a power. So for example, it can be something as simple as just a number. So it can be five. It can also be the product, which product just means to multiply. It can be the product of a number and a variable. So it can be something like six X. It can be the product of a number and a variable raised to powers, so something like 7x squared. It can also just be a variable. It can be something like x or a negative x. So I used x in all of these examples, but it can be any letter, any combination of letter. It can be more than a couple letters. It can be something like 8xyz to the 17th power. Individually, these are all terms. What we're focusing on first today in these terms is something called the numerical coefficient. Okay, the numerical coefficient is the number factor of a variable term. So you've got in a chart of examples, when you have something like 3x, that 3 is the numerical coefficient. I'm going to skip this one right here for just a second. When you have something like 0.7 AB cubed C to the fifth, it is what's in front of all those letters. When you have just a variable, so Z, you can write that as a one Z, so your numerical coefficient is one. Same concept with a negative Y. Negative Y can also be a negative one Y, so your numerical coefficient is negative one. When you have no variable, when you have just a number, the numerical coefficient is itself. So if my term is negative five, the numerical coefficient is negative five. So coming back up to this one right here that we skipped, remember down here when I had this z, that was the same as one z. So that means that y cubed is the same as one y cubed all over five. And so that's where that one fifth comes from. You've got the one in front of the y cubed and that's still all over five. So let's try some examples down here. Example one, identify the numerical coefficient. So in 22 z to the fourth, it's what's right here in front of that variable. So this one's nice and easy. That one's just 22. Same thing on B, negative three Y, it's what's in front of that variable. So negative three. If it's X, remember, if you see nothing, there's a known one. That's the same as one X. So that one is a one, same concept with a negative variable, a negative W is the same as negative one W, so that's negative one. And that X is the same as a one X. So my numerical coefficient here is one seventh. So let's turn the page. Goes on to say terms with the same variable raised to exactly the same powers are called like terms. So opposite, terms that aren't like terms are then called unlike terms. These are important that we can recognize the difference. So I'm not gonna go over this completely, but you have some examples of some like terms here, and you have some examples of some unlike terms. Notice here, it says that these terms must be raised to the same variable and exactly the same power. So this one is not 
like terms because yes, they both have an X, but one's just an X and one's an X squared. So it's not the same power. This one here, completely different variables. So that one's a no brainer. And then this one here, you've got an A, B, and an A and a B, but this B has no exponent. This one does. This one has a C. This one has no C. So pretty straightforward on those last two. So example two, determine whether the terms are like or unlike. So you have a 4X and a 5X. Do they have the same variable? Yes, they do. Do they have the same amount of power? Yes, they do. So this one would be like. On B, it's kind of like this one right here that we saw. Yes, it's both an X, but you have one that's just an X and one that's an X squared. So because they have different exponents, different powers, this one is unlike. On C, you need to check all the variables and all the powers. So you've got an X squared, an X squared, an X squared. So those are all good. Then you have Y, Y, Y. So because they are all the exact same, those are a like. On this one, you still do the same thing. It doesn't matter if they're out of order. That's perfectly okay. On D, you have a Y and you have a Y. So those are good. You have a Z and you have a Z. So even though they're in different orders, that's okay. They still have the same variable and they have the same power. And then on E, you have an AB and I have an AB. So variables are the same. So check the power. You've got an A squared and an A cubed. So I don't even need to look at B. I can tell right there that that is unlike. But you can also check B. You got a B cubed and a B squared. So those aren't the same either. So let's actually get into some sections now that we've gone over the vocabulary we need. In section 3.1, objective A, we're using properties of numbers to combine like terms. A combination of letters, sorry, a combination of numbers, letters, or variables, and operation symbols is called an algebraic expression or simply an expression. A lot of times we'll refer to it as an expression and not an algebraic expression. An expression containing the sum and or difference of like terms can be simplified by, I don't know why I don't have two blank or three blanks here, because this can be simplifying, can be simplified. That should be simplified by combining like terms. So those are some grammar errors right there. By combining... like terms. Okay, so combine like terms. So check first. Is 7x and 3x like terms? Yes, they are. So then we need to add these together. 7 plus 3 gives me 10, and then you need to keep whatever that like term is. In this case, my like term is an x, so the x stays. Notice it doesn't become an x squared. Okay, that's multiplying. If it's an x and an x, it combines to still just becoming an X. On B, we have a 9Y. What can I combine with a 9Y? That'd be that 3Y. When you're combining like terms, you need to keep whatever that sign is in front of it with it. So it's a minus 3Y. So that's going to become a negative 3Y right there. So keep the sign in front. So 9 minus 3 is 6. My like term was with that Y, so it stays. And then this, you have nothing to combine it with, so it just comes down, plus five. Now, what this does not become is an 11Y. No, no, no. Those are not like terms. And because they are not like terms, this is as simple as this can go. One has a Y and one doesn't, so you can't add six and five together. That's like adding ant oranges and bananas, okay? It doesn't work like that. On part C, <clears throat> we have a negative five Y squared, so what else in this problem has a Y squared with it? Well, that would be this right here. And so what is my numerical coefficient with that Y squared? Well, that's the same as a one 
y squared. So negative 5 plus 1 gives me negative 4. Keep that like term, so y squared. Now on this one, now we have just numbers, so we can combine our just numbers. So negative 3 plus 2 gives me a minus 1. Again, do not combine that to a negative 5. One has a y squared and one has no variable at all. So you can't combine further than that. Okay, likewise here on D, you got a y and then a y squared. Those are unlike terms, just like they were unlike terms in this problem up here. So on this one, we can't combine You could also have said, can't simplify. Okay, that's as, as simple as that's gonna get. You cannot combine to make that a one. <clears throat> okay, page three. In section three one, we've got objective B and C together. We're simplifying, we're multiplying and simplifying expressions. And by doing this, we're doing the distributive property. So when you have a number outside parentheses. That means that this is being multiplied, this two is being multiplied by everything in those parentheses. So you can see here, they did two times three right here. They did two times x right here. Two times three is six. Two times x is two x. Notice the simples simplifies to just that. This does not again become 8x. No. One has an x and one does not. Okay, so let's try some. Example four, simplify each expression. So we've got three times two x. That's gonna give me six x. Three times five gives me 15. Can we combine? Are we done simplifying? Yes, we are. This has an X and this one does not. So that is my final answer. On B, be careful with this one. This two here is being multiplied by everything that's in parentheses. This nine is not in parentheses, so I'm not doing two times nine. I'm only multiplying what's in front of the parentheses by what's in the parentheses, not what's on the outside of it. So here you've got two times four X to get eight X. Let's make that X a little prettier. Two times a negative 10 to get negative 20. And then this plus nine just comes down. So ask yourself, can I simplify any other like terms? In this one, yes we can. We now have a negative 20 plus nine so my 8x that I have nothing to combine with just comes down and negative 20 plus nine gives me a negative 11. Now we are done because one has an x and one does not. On C, you've got negative outside the parentheses and then five x minus three inside. Think of this negative as a negative one. So you're multiplying everything inside those parentheses by negative one. So you've got negative one times five x to get negative five x. And negative one times a negative three, well negative times negative is positive, so this is a plus three. Can I combine these? No, no we cannot. One has an x and one does not. So here on D, we need to simplify, or we need to distribute twice. This negative two is gonna be multiplied by everything in parentheses here. And then this negative or negative one needs to be multiplied by everything in parentheses on this side. So negative two times four X is negative X. Negative two times seven gives me negative 14. So now let's change this to a negative one. Negative one times three X is negative three X. And negative one times a negative one is a positive one. So now combined. Now I can combine my x's together and notice I'm including that negative with that 3x. So negative 8x minus 3x gives me a negative 11. It's a negative 11x. 
and negative 14 plus 1 gives me a negative 13. Can we combine this further? No, because again, 1 has an x and 1 does not. So this is my final answer. Okay, section 3.1, objective D, find the perimeter and area. So it says, recall that the perimeter of a figure is the distance around the figure. Therefore, to find the perimeter, add the lengths of the sides. We use P to represent perimeter. So, find the perimeter of each shape. So in part A, I am simply adding all of these sides together. So if I start here, I've got 1 plus 3Z plus 1 plus 5z. Is this simplified? No, we can combine a couple things here. So I can go 1 plus 1 to give me 2. And we've got 3z plus 5z to get 8z. Anytime we are finding perimeter area, we've got a word problem with units, you need to put units on as your final answer. So my perimeter is not just 2 plus 8z, it is 2 plus 8z meters. On your test, you will not get full credit if you do not give me your units here. Units are important. Okay, on B, my perimeter, add them all up. 3x plus x plus 7 plus 4x plus 12 plus 5x. Okay, I got a little sloppy, but add them all up. And now combine your like terms. So, what can I combine with this 3x? Well, we can combine an x a 4x, and a 5x. So, 3 plus 1 gives me 4, plus another 4 is 8, and 8 plus 5 gives me 13. So I've got 13x, and then we've got plus 7 plus 12, so 7 plus 12 gives me 19. This is not my final answer. What am I forgetting? My units. What's my units in part B? It's feet. So my perimeter is not just 13x plus 19, but it's 13x plus 19 feet. So those last problems, all we did was find the area. Or sorry, we found the perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around. You can think of this in, as in terms of your backyard. This is your fence, okay? This is just the distance around something. When we measure this, we measure this in just units. So on this page here, that's why we had meters. Oops. Go away. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing there. Okay, we had just meters and then we had just feet. So now, now it says recall that the area of a figure is the number of units squared, or unit squares, that can be contained, that's supposed to be a, that can be contained within it. The unit square is usually some standard unit, like square meter, square foot, square inch. So, Basically, let's just think of this as a, let me make my own problem real quick. If this is a two by three rectangle, that means we have two units going along the two, and I have three units going this way here. So how many boxes do I have? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what it means here by unit squares, okay? And so to find the area of a rectangle, we do length times width. So in this problem, if we would have done two times three, that would have given me also my area of six, okay? All 
All right. So in part A, find the area of each rectangle. So my area formula for any rectangle is length times width. So if you haven't memorized that by now, you need to. Length here is 11 times my width, which is z minus 6. So we already know how to, pro how to solve a problem with parentheses. This is going to be that distributive property. So my area is 11 times z, which is 11z, and 11 times the negative 6, which is negative 66. Just like with perimeter, you need units here. So because we are dealing with area and it's unit squares that we are dealing with, it's not just meters anymore, it is meters squared. You can also write that if you want to do, instead of meters squared, you can also do square meters. Okay, if you actually want to like write it out, but that's what that m squared means. So same thing on B. My area equals length times width. So my length is 45 times my width of 2x minus 6. So distribute again. So my area is 45 times 2, which is 90x. And then we have 45 times 6, which is going to give me 270. Okay, are we done? Well, we're done on the solving part, but this one's in units of feet. So that means that this is going to be feet squared. Okay, area has squared, perimeter does not. So, on to section 3-2. Section 3-2, objective B, we're using both addition and multiplication properties to solve equations. Here, the big thing, use your opposite operation. So, it says, first, let's recall the difference between an expression and an equation. Up until this point, we've been dealing with expressions. It says, remember that an equation contains an equal sign and an expression does not. So you've got some examples of some equations here. You've got an equal sign, you've got an equal sign. Makes it an equation. On here, you've got expressions. You have no equal sign, no equal sign anywhere. So that's how you know the difference. Expressions, all you can do is simplify, combine your like terms, with now, we're about to get into some equations. Now we can actually solve these. So let's turn the page and let's start some solving. So you have some addition property of inequality and you have your multiplication of inequality. It says instead of kind of making, you know, making these charts here make sense because they're, they're confusing a little bit. It just says here, in other words, the same number may be added to, subtracted from both sides of an equation without changing the solution of an equation. Oh, excuse me. Also, hmm, also, both sides of an equation may be multiplied or divided by the same non-zero number without changing the solution of the equation. So what we're going to do is first simplify one, simplify one of both sides. I don't know what I was trying to write here, but we need to simplify both sides of an, e of an equation first. So always look, can I combine anything on the left? Can I combine anything on the right? And then the second one is always do the opposite operation. So for example, opposite of addition is subtraction. Opposite of multiplication is division. So if something is being multiplied, we need to divide that number over. If something's being added, we need to subtract that number over. Okay, opposite operation. So first one, simplify. Look at this side here first. Can you simplify x plus 6? No, those are not like terms, so we can't simplify anything over there. 
Okay, look at this side of the equation. Can you can can you simplify one minus three? Yes. So I can bring down my x plus six and one minus three gives me a negative two. So the whole goal here is to solve for x. So what's happening to x? Well, we've got six being added to it. What is the opposite operation of adding six? That would be subtracting six. So you'll kind of see other professors doing this little line here. What's really important is that when you, okay, so we said the opposite operation to add six is to subtract six. When I subtract 6 from the left side of this equation, you have to, have to, have to subtract 6 from the other side as well. Think of this as a scales. When you take 6 pounds of weight from one side of that scale, you've got to subtract 6 pounds from the other side of that scale to still keep this balanced. Same thing with your equation. What you do to one side of the equation you've got to do to the other side of this equation to make this thing balanced. So six minus six cancels out. I'm only left with an X. Bring down your equal sign and negative two minus six gives me a negative eight. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna go a little bit quicker on this other one. Can we combine anything on this side? Nope, those are unlike terms. Can I combine anything on this side? Yes, we can. So, negative 2 minus 6 gives me a negative 8. You need to bring down everything else that we haven't used yet. The goal here is to get that variable by itself. So, what is happening to that y? Well, with that y, we're subtracting 5 from it. So, what's the opposite of subtracting 5? That is to add 5. We know that what we do to one side of this equation, we've got to do to this other side of this equation over here. So I'm going to also add 5 to this side here. So now we've got y equals, since these cancel each other out, negative 8 plus 5 gives me a negative 3. Okay, can we combine anything? With this side of the equation, are those like terms? Yes, they are. So 3 minus 7 gives me negative 4. So negative 4y equals, can't combine anything with the 12 since it's just a 12. So what operation is going on right here? When you have a number next to a variable the known operation is being multiplication so this is negative four times y what is the opposite of multiplication that's going to be division so i'm going to divide a negative four from this side of my equation you have to keep this equation balanced so if i am dividing four from one side of this equation I've got to divide 4 from the other side of this equation as well. So my negative 4s cancel. I'm left with y equals 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. Okay, can I combine anything on this side? Nope, that's a z and a number. Those don't combine. Can I combine anything on this side here? Yeah, we can combine some numbers. So I've got z over negative 4 equals 11 minus 5 gives me 6. So what's happening with this z? The goal here is to get z by itself. Well, this little bar right here means division. It's a fraction. Fraction is just division. So the opposite of dividing by 4 or dividing by negative 4 is to multiply by negative 4. What I do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side. So my negative 4 is cancel. I'm left with z equals 6 times the negative 4 gives me negative 24. Okay, E and F, we now have two-step and multi-step. 
So on E, can I combine anything? Is there anything on this side I can combine? Nope, you can't combine a variable and a number. And the other side, you just have a 46. So you gotta take care of this one first. What's the opposite of a positive one or a plus one? It's a minus one. And I minus four, don't know why. Let's minus one. What I do to one side of this equation, we have to do to the other side. So I'm gonna subtract one over here. So I've got five M equals 46 minus one gives me 45. What operation is going on between that five and that M? When you have When you have a number right next to a variable, that is known to be multiplication. That is 5m, or that's 5 times m. So the opposite is to divide. If I divide 5 on one side of the equation, we have to divide by 5 on the other side. So my 5s cancel. I'm left with m equals, and 45 divided by 5 is 9. <clears throat> Okay, and the last one on this page, look at both sides. Can I combine anything on this side here? Yeah, we can combine that negative 10 and negative 2. So we're going to get negative 2D. Minus 12. Now look at this side here. Can I combine anything on this side of the equation? Yeah, just like on the other side, we can combine some numbers. So negative 8. Minus 4 gives me negative 12. So the goal here is to get D by itself. So we got to get rid of this minus 12. The opposite of subtracting is to add. So what I do to one side of this equation, you've got to do to the other side. So because I'm adding 12 to one side, we're adding 12 to the other. So I'm left with a negative 2D equals negative 12 plus 12 is 0. Don't let that zero fool you. Don't let that zero stop you. Now, divide your both sides by negative two. The opposite operation of multiplication is division. And so I'm left with D equals zero divided by any number is zero. And it's okay to have zero as an answer. All right, now 3-3, three, three, objective B, we are solving equations containing parentheses. So, just like before, just like before, the goal here is to get that variable, get the variable by itself. So, we have a couple steps on this one. Step one, if there are parentheses, we've got to use distributive property. Step two, like before, combine any like terms on each side of the equation. Step three, use addition property of inequality to rewrite the equation so that the variable terms are on one side and the constant or number term is on the other side. Use your multiplication of a property to divide both sides. And then step five, you can check your solution. So go through your steps. Example eight, letter A. Start at step one. Do we have any parentheses? Yes, we do. So we need to start with distributive property. So we're going to distribute that 4 to everything. So bring down your 21y. 4 times 5y is 20y. And 4 times a negative 7 gives me negative 28. So combine any like terms on each side of the equation. Well, this side only has one term, so there's nothing to combine there. Can I combine anything on this side of the equation? Well, no, one has a variable and one doesn't. So we're kind of skipping step two. Step three, 
Rewrite the equation so that the variable's on one side and the constant's on the other side. We already have the constant on one side. Notice there's not a constant over here. So my constant's on one side, so that mean, means I need my variable on this side here. You want your variable on one side, your number on the other side. So you've got a 20 Y. I need to move this over here to this side here. So what is the opposite of a positive 20 Y? That'd be a negative 20 Y. So I'm gonna subtract 20 Y from both sides of my equation. Well, 21 minus 20 is 1y, and we bring down that equals negative 28. 1y is simply the same as just y. So you can either say 1y equals 28 or just y equals 28. Okay, on B, step one, are there parentheses present? Yes, there are, so let's use distributive properties. We're gonna distribute that negative two to everything. So I'm gonna get negative 10x plus 16, and then I'm gonna bring down my equal sign and my six x. Step two, combine any like terms. I have nothing to combine over here. One has an x, one doesn't, and then this is just one term, nothing to combine. So step three, get the constant on one side, your variable on the other side. Well, I have my constant by itself here, right? There's no number over here, so my constant's by itself. So that means because my constant is here, I need my variable over here. So kind of the same as what we did right here. The opposite of a positive 20y was a negative 20y. So what's the opposite of a negative 10x? That's gonna be a positive 10x. I'm gonna add 10x over. So now those cancel. I'm left with 16 equals 6x plus 10x gives me 16x. <clears throat> Step four says to use the multiplication property of inequality to divide both sides by the numerical coefficient. So the opposite of 16 times x would be to divide it. So those cancel. 16 divided by 16 is 1, so I've got 1 equals x. Now, I don't care if you leave this as 1 equals x. I personally like x equals 1, but those mean the exact same thing. It does not matter what order if you put number or variable first. On C, step 1, are there parentheses? Yes, let's distribute. So we've got 4x plus 12 bring down your plus one, your equals, and your 13. Step two, combine any like terms. Can I combine anything on this side here? Yes, we can. Usually when there's three terms, we can combine something. So I can bring down my 4x, but, excuse me, 13 plus, or sorry, <laughs> 12 plus one is 13. So plus 13 equals 13. So step three, we need to get the constant on one side, the variable on the other. So on this one, now I have my variable here. That means I need my constant over here. So the opposite of plus 13 is a minus 13. So I'm left with 4x equals 13 minus 13 is zero. Again, don't let that zero stop you because I can still get an answer. We've got four times x, the opposite of times is to divide, so I'm gonna divide my four over. Well, zero divided by any number is zero. And that is perfectly okay to have. Lastly, on this page D, do we have parentheses? Yes, so let's distribute that five to everything in parentheses. So I've got 15x minus five Notice that plus two is not in parentheses, so I'm not timesing two with five. So just bring down your plus two, your equals, your 12x, and your minus six. So now, step two, combine like terms. Do I have anything to combine on this side here? Yeah, again, three terms, we're combining something. So 15x 
negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3 equals. Can I combine anything on this side? Nope, one has an x, one does not. So that's just 12x minus 6. Now this is one where you have so many options. Notice we have an x on both sides and I have a number on both sides. That simply means you just need to move something. It does not matter what you move as long as it is mathematically correct. Just move something. If you are wanting to move that 15, the opposite of a 15x, of a positive 15x is to subtract 15x. So that's how we would move that 15x. Then you have a minus three. The opposite of minus three is to add three. So we can move that negative three by adding three over. We can move that 12x, the opposite again, of a positive 12x is a negative 12x. And then lastly, you've got a minus six the opposite of minus 6 is to add 6. So we could literally move anything. When you have, again, an x on both sides and a number on both sides, just move something. Now, it does seem to be kind of custom to uh, put your variable over here and your number over here. But it's not the only way to do it. So the way I'm solving it is not the only way to do this. But if my step three is to get the variable on one side, I'm going to put this variable over here. So we already discussed that the opposite of a positive 12x is a negative 12x. I'm going to subtract 12x from both sides. So my 12x is cancel over here. 15 minus 12 gives me 3x. Now bring down everything else we haven't used. So I haven't used this minus 3, my equals, and my negative 6. So now that I have my variable over here, check, now I need to get my number over here. So to move that minus 3, the opposite of subtraction is addition. I'm going to add that 3 over. So I've got 3x equals negative 6 plus 3 is a negative 3. And then step 4 is to divide both sides by that numerical coefficient. So I've got to divide by 3. And my final answer is x equals negative 1. Okay, last page, guys. Stick through this. You guys are doing great. All right. 9-3 objective B is solving equations containing fractions. I know how much we hate, hate, hate fractions, but don't be scared of fractions. What does this bar right here symbol? That bar is just simply divide, right? That's 3x minus 6 all being divided by 5. Well, what's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So let's multiply that puppy over. That makes this 5 and this 5 cancel. So when I multiply this side by 5, it cancels with the bottom. That's a whole reason of multiplying by 5. So what comes down is just the top of that fraction. Okay, again, we're not doing 5 times 3 and 5 times 6 because it cancels with that bottom 5. But we know that what I do to one side of this equation, we have to what? Do to the other side. So I'm going to multiply this side by 5. Well, when I multiply the right side by 5, what am I multiplying by 5? Am I multiplying the 3x or am I multiplying the 6? Trick question. We're multiplying it all, guys. Think of this as in parentheses, we're distributing that 5 to everything on that side. So this is going to equal 3x times 5 gives me 15x, and 6 times 5 gives me a positive 30. So now solve. This is one of those ones again where I have an x on both sides and a number on both sides. So simply move something. 
If I want my variable over here, that means I need to move this 15x to this side here. And that's typically what I like to do is get the variable on the left, number on the right. So opposite of a positive 15x is a negative 15x. We're going to subtract it over. Cancels there. 3 minus 15 is a negative 12x. Bring down everything else we haven't used. So I haven't used a negative 6, an equal sign, or a 30. So now that I have my variable here, I need to get my number over here. So the opposite of a minus 6 is to add a 6. So those cancel. I'm left with negative 12x equals a positive 36. And my last step is to divide that negative 12 over. So my final answer is x equals negative 3. Okay, same thing on B. It's the exact same problem. How do I get rid of this 3 on the bottom? Well, it's being divided. So the opposite of dividing by 3 is to multiply by 3. So now those cancel out here. And so I'm left with a 2 times a plus 3. What I do to one side of this equation, we have to do to the other. So since I multiplied the left side by 3, that means I need to multiply the right side also by 3. So not just the 6a is getting multiplied, not just the 2. These are both getting multiplied by 3, so multiply everything by that 3. So I've got 6a times 3 is going to give me 18a. And 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. So in this one, we could have went ahead and distributed that 2, but I didn't want to do those two steps in one. But now we need to distribute that 2 in here. So 2a plus 6 now equals 18a plus 6. Okay, so we could have really went straight from here to here if you're comfortable doing that. So, just like before, we've got a variable on both sides and a number on both sides. Just move something. So, if I want my variable over here again, I need to move this 18a over here. So, the opposite of a positive 18a is a negative 18a. So 12a minus 18a gives me negative 16a. Bring everything else down we haven't used. I haven't used a plus 6, an equals, or another 6. So now that I have my variable over here, I need my number over here. So how do you move this positive 6 over? We're going to subtract it over. So I've got negative 16a equals 6 minus 6 is 0. Again, don't let that zero confuse you. Don't let that zero stop you. We still need to get A by itself, so we're going to divide that negative 16 over. Zero divided by anything is zero, so A here is zero. Okay, now I've had three that's kind of happened like that, where we get, like on this one, negative 16 A equals zero. Let's keep that in mind when we go down to these last two examples. 3, 9, 3, objective C is identifying identities and equations with no solution. So up until this point, we have always had a solution, one solution. I've had x equals negative 3, a equals 0. Over here, y equals negative 28, x equals 1, x equals 0, x equals negative 1. We've had one answer solutions in all of our problems so far. I have found the one and only solution. More times than not, that is what's going to happen. You are going to get a problem and you are going to get one answer. That's not always going to happen. So it says right here, so far, each equation that we have solved has had a single solution. However, not every equation in one variable has a single solution. Some equations have no solutions, while others have an infinite number of solutions, and this is also called an identity. So we have two examples. One's going to be an equation with no solution, and one's going to be an equation 
with infinite solutions, one's going to be an identity. So, 10a, we first have parentheses, so let's distribute. So, I've got negative 2 times x and negative 2 times a negative 5, which is a positive 10. Bring down everything else I haven't used, so plus 10 and my equal sign. I've got parentheses on this side as well. So, negative 3 times x and negative 3 times a negative 2 and then bring down that plus x. So, combined on each side. On this side, what can I combine? I can combine that 10 and 10. So, I've got 2x plus 20 equals combined on this side. What can we combine on this side? Yeah, we've got two x's. So, negative 3 Hmm, negative 3 plus uh, 1 gives me a negative 2x, and then bring down that minus 6. So, we're back up to those top ones. I've got an x on both sides, and I've got a number on both sides. Just move something. So, like always... I'm going to put my variable on the left. I'm going to put my number here on the right. So that means I need this x over here. So what's the opposite of a negative 2x? That's to add 2x over. So those are going to cancel. Hmm. Well, what do you know happens here? 2x or a negative 2x plus 2x, that also cancels. So my variable is completely gone okay it canceled on both sides so what do we have left at this point well we have a 20 on this side bring down our equal sign we have a negative 6 is this a true statement does 20 equal negative 6 is 20 dollars the same as owing somebody 6 no it is not Okay, so I'm going to put a little line through that. That little line means does not equal. 20 does not equal negative 6. When this happens, when your variables cancel, and your statement that you have left is not true, that means this one here has no solution. And you might see it in my math lab as a zero with a line going through it. It means an empty set. That is completely different than what happened right here in B. Notice here, I still have a variable. I still have a variable. Yes, my 6 and my negative 6 did cancel to give me that 0. But the, the difference is I have a variable. If you have a variable, you have one solution. When your variables cancel out, that's when you've got no solutions or infinite many. That's when something different has happened. Okay, so spoiler alert, since that one's a no solution, this is an example of infinitely many. So on part B, we have some parentheses. So let's go ahead and distribute. I'm going to move this over a little bit over here. So 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times a negative 4 is negative 12 Bring down your equals, bring down your 3x and a negative 12. What do you notice about this equation? You've got a 3x minus 12 on this side and a 3x minus 12 on this side. When your equation is exactly the same, this is your infinitely many solutions. Okay, you might also see it in my math lab is that little side words eight. That means infinity as infinite solutions. Now, let's say you didn't notice that you have the same thing on both sides. We had that 3x minus 12 equals 3x minus 12. So, if we see this here and we don't notice that it's the same on both sides, you can still keep going and solve this. We've got an X on both sides. We've got a number on both sides. So that just means move something. So like before, I'm going to put my variable over here and my number over here. 
So that means I need to put make my 3x go over here. So the opposite of a positive 3x is a minus 3x. I'm going to subtract it over. And just like on part A, 3 minus 3 cancels, 3 minus 3 cancels, and I'm left with negative 12 equals negative 12. So because this is a true statement, negative 12 does equal negative 12. That's also why this one here is infinitely many solutions. Okay, so it doesn't matter really where you stop. If you stop here where both sides are the same or you stop where you have no variable, it both means infinitely many solutions. So that is all I have for this lesson here. If you have any questions, you can email me, see me before or after class. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. You can rewind it, go back to any problem that you need, and I will see you next lesson.